everyone, welcome to Watch It, Paint It. This week, we're gonna be back on Massive Darkness by Simon Games. Not painted this in a while, a little bit distracted with Green Horde and everything else. I thought we'd come back to it. I'm gonna be starting, sorry, didn't even mention, this is the Goblin Warrior Minion, and we're gonna be starting by priming that in a color primer by the Army Painter, that was Necrotic Flesh. That's just gonna basically do the undercoat, the base coat of all of his skin for us for free while priming him simultaneously. I'm going to use Crush Skull, that's from the new Army Painter's Green Horde set, and that's to do the, he's got a wrap around his um, his belly, his tummy, his stomach, uh, just going to be covering those bandages in that colour. Also from the new set, I'm going to be using the Orc Skin, that's a, that's a darkish army kind of green, which is really, really similar to Elf Green from the previous set, and I'm going to be painting his skirt in that. And then for the metallics, well, for half of the metallics, we're going to be using Rough Iron. Again, that's in the new Zombie Side Green Horde paint set by the Army Painter. You could buy this completely separately as well. I already own this colour, for instance. And I'm just going to be painting all, as I said, most of his metallics, half of his metallics. So this, uh, this is his boots. He's got metal boots on, metal knee pads, thigh pads. He's also got a sort of shield on his stomach. I'm not quite sure what that is. Some sort of round armor plating on his belly. Doesn't want to take a stab wound to the stomach. That's supposed to be remarkably painful, actually. So I don't blame this guy. That's not somewhere you want to get stabbed. He's also then got sort of wrist guards and forearm guards as well. So all of that's getting done in that rough eye and a really, really dark metallic. Claymore blade, oh, the light silver by the army painter. And that's going to be doing the pommels and the hilt of his two where he's got a dagger and a big sword so that's the metallics done so far leather brown's going to be out by the army painter this again was in the black plague set you can buy this separately as well this is a nice easy one to pick up and we'll be painting the straps that are holding up his shield that's on his back I'm going to be painting both of those in leather brown and he's also got a couple of bags one in each sort of hip i'm going to paint those in leather brown as well give them the look of leather make them look as realistic as possible. And it's going to be a great contrast against that rough iron and the, the orc skin, that green that we painted on before. So it's a nice brown to use there. And that's kind of the first pass at the base colours sort of done. I'm missing out a bunch of it because I'm going to be using some special paints that I want to make a standalone tutorial for. So the ordering is going to be a little bit weird here, but I'd advise you do all the base colours at once and then move on to the washing. But I've moved on to the washing here. This is Plague Shader. This was from the Black Plague. Um, army painter set again it's quite a light green shade and i'm just going to be shading all of his skin with this color and i've watered this down so it's about 50 50 i'd say of water to to, to wash just because i want to just darken his skin down a little bit and make sure it goes in all the recesses zombie shader that's a sort of light brown shader and this is going to be for the browns so those leather browns i'm just going to very carefully using my detail brush just get a little bit of shade on that and then finally, Horde Shader. This is a slightly darker green. This is from the, that new Army Painter set for the for Green Horde. And it's just a little bit of a darker green. And I'm going to be painting that on top of that Orc Skin. I forgot to mention before, that Orc Skin was put on really, really watery, which has allowed that necrotic flesh to show through on the highlights. And I've sort of cheated and just done the whole thing in like one go there. It, that was the base, the highlights, and the shade. And you can already see... That, that's looking pretty well highlighted and the details are brought out just by watering down the paint so that's a great little cheat and tip there for you i'm going to use first of all that was machine gun metal which i just dry brushed on all of the rough iron just to bring some shine to all of the raised parts and then i'm going to use claymore blade and my detail brush just to paint the very very edges get a load of edge highlighting make that metallic look really realistic and then crush skull back out again which is nearly identical to brain matter beige if you have that from the previous set and i'm just using my insane detail brush just painting on those individual bandages again, just getting the top the sort of line of each bit of that detail. And leather brown, just the same. I'm just going to paint on a, a little bit of the base color back on along the top edges of all the straps and the top of the and the top and the edges of all the, the well, all those two bags, one on each side. And then I'm going to use plague skin. I'm going to be painting back in the base color of his skin. So the, and all the raised bits and the, all the flat bits as well. I'm really just leaving that shade in the recesses. So I painted all his ears back in and the, the middle of his ear on the front, just leaving it in the recesses of his ear, around his neck, in his eyes, around his nose, sort of his lip, on his necklines left it that bit dark. And then in between his fingers, I've left dark as well. And then for his body, I've just painted what you can basically get to and left the shade in the recesses, painting on his sort of ribs and his abs um, effectively. 
And then getting that back to how I want it, I'm going to mix in about 50-50 with crushed skull. So I'm just lightening that up. Now, depending how sort of well you want this highlight to flow, just mix in a less percentage of the, the crushed skull. And you can build up this up in layers if you want to flow really, really smoothly. I just, with this being a minion, I was trying to do it quickly. I did the Goblin Archer from Massive Darkness really, really slowly, really, really high detail. So if you would like to see it in more detail, watch that video instead. Then I just painted on his teeth with Crushed Skull, the, the Brain Matter Beige equivalent. And then I'm going to do his eyes as detailed as I can. So I'm using Abomination Gore to paint his eyeballs in red. I'm then going to use Babe Blonde. This is from a really, really previous set, one of the modern day, I think the Survivor set of Army Painter's Zombicide range. And I'm just going to dab in two sort of pupils, no, irises, sorry. These would be his irises. I'm just going to dab those in on top of the red. I'm just doing it as close to the artwork as I can. This is really, really small, so it's difficult. And at this point, I could not show you doing dead black, but I, I did him a pupil on each side. It took me a fair few attempts, and I had to keep painting the yellow back in and starting again. But I did manage to do it off camera first try, but I tried to do it on camera lots and lots of times. I'm going to take that dead black, and I'm going to paint the handles to his sword and his dagger as well. And then I'm going to start, well... You can tell I'm starting to do the, the last bits that I did in base coat originally. And that's because I'm going to make, as I mentioned, a longer video on how to do this later on. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to watch this in more detail if you'd like to see that. But basically, just going to paint it black to begin with. So giving the metallics a nice black base, I would have primed it in this, except the necrotic skin, that necrotic flesh made me not have to paint his skin, which is a lot harder because it's in like all the fiddly places. Whereas painting the black back on top of these, they're all raised, they're all out. They're all fairly large areas, which are nice and easy to paint. With the exception of sort of round his ears and his neck there, which I switched down to my detail brush just to get that in nice and carefully. After that, I'm going to use Dark Stars Black and Bronze. This is from their Molten Metals range. So this is a really, really dark bronze color, really weathered looking, looking paint. And as I mentioned, there will be a link in the description below. And I'll talk about why I'm doing everything in in more detail than this, hopefully, in, in a standalone video, but I'll just roughly explain it here as well. So after that black base coat, I'm just gonna go around and cover the whole area in this black and bronze as the, the new base coat. That was watered down as well. Just paint on top of the black, and it's you can see the black semi through. And then after that, I'm gonna take their Dark Stars Molten Metals again, and this is their bronze color. I'm just going to dry brush that all over all of those areas and just bring some of that color, that bronze color back out. And next, I'm, to wash it, I'm going to use Secret Weapons Sewer Water. This is a really dingy, browny green sort of color. It just looks like sewer water, like you could imagine it looks like. And then I'm going to just paint that over all of those places which I just bronzed before. Then finally, after that uh, wash is, is, is dried, has settled and dried, I'm just going to do a, a final dry brushing, exactly the same as the sort of second step to this. And I'm going to use Dark Stars, just normal bronze, and just, just dry brush it over all of the basically same areas. And just really, really focusing on sort of the points and tips and edges of all of these bronze areas. So the sides of his daggers, down the middle of his dagger, all of those spikes that are on the back of his um, shield. And then just going to do a little bit, bit of edge highlighting around his shield as a final sort of highlight to that. Then... The bit you couldn't do until you'd done the helmet was that bird skull that's on his on his head. So I'm going to use crushed skull again, and I'm going to paint in the skull of the bird, and then going to use dead black. It was mostly black anyway, but I'd caught some metallic colors, some bronze on this. So just painting in the beak of that bird, just give it a nice black beak. And then I'm going to use a little bit of zombie shader, just a teeny tiny bit. You can see I'm using my detail brush. That's my insane detail brush, actually. Like That's how small this is. I'm just putting a tiny, tiny bit of zombie shader on the skull and I'm doing it quite precisely, so I won't need to highlight that up again. I'm going to use Necromancer's Cloak, Necromancer Cloak. I always call it Necromancer's. Little bit of shine on his beak, little bit on either one of his uh, sword blades. Uh, not blades, what am I talking about? Oh my god, I'm so tired, I can't even word. I'm going to put a little bit of Filthy Suit down the edge of both of his blade handles. I'm also going to paint the base in Filthy Suit as well. Just, just because all of my minions are done in Filthy Suit are light grey, just so I can recognise them quite quickly and easily on the massive darkness board i know which is which so that's basically me thinking i'm about finished there but i wasn't super satisfied with the bronze not that there's anything wrong with the bronze the bronze looks really nice it was just a bit too much bronze and then trying to keep a bit more with sort of the artwork i thought his 
that chain stuff that's hanging around his neck looks a lot lot brighter and maybe his helmet does as well but I'm not going to change too much but I'm just going to go and use my detail brush and dab in a little bit of gold on each one of those sort of what do you call it like the the chain of his chain mail that's round his round his neck so each individual um, like scale and then I'm going to add a little bit of glistening blood just being extra careful this time making sure I don't get anywhere near too much on this so I'm just doing it a little bit little bit on the tip of his dagger like it is in the artwork and a little bit splattered up his sword both sides to make it look realistic it is a 3d sword after all it will splatter on both sides and now i'm satisfied I'm completely finished this is the goblin warrior an hour and 13 minutes so if you do check out or you, you've seen before the goblin archer this is a lot 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 quicker than that so if you'd like to see it done in a sort of more careful more highlights more layers that sort of thing check out that goblin archer video but if you want to see it done a lot faster and i still think this looks great hopefully you guys will agree let me know in the comments below if this is plenty good enough for sort of tabletop and a mob a horde style monster thank you all very much for watching